Nuclear fission products are the atomic fragments left after a large atomic nucleus undergoes nuclear fission. Typically, a large nucleus like that of uranium fissions by splitting into two smaller nuclei, along with a few neutrons, the release of heat energy, and gamma rays. The two smaller nuclei are the fission products. About 0.2% to 0.4% of fissions are ternary fissions, producing a third light nucleus such as helium-4 or tritium. The fission products themselves are often unstable and radioactive, due to being relatively neutron-rich for their atomic number, and many of them quickly undergo beta decay. This releases additional energy in the form of beta particles, antineutrinos, and gamma rays. Thus, fission events normally result in beta radiation and antineutrinos. Even though these particles are not produced directly by the fission event itself, many of these isotopes have a very short half-life and therefore give off huge amounts of radiation. For instance, strontium-90, strontium-89 and strontium-94 are all fission products. They are produced in similar quantities and each nucleus decays by shooting off one beta particle. But senior 90 has a 30-year half-life, senior 89 a 50.5-day half-life, and senior 94 a 75-second half-life. When freshly created, senior 89 will spray beta particles 10,600 times faster than senior 90, and senior 94 will do so 915 million times faster. It is these short half-life isotopes that make spent fuel so dangerous, in addition to generating much heat. Immediately after the reactor itself has been shut down, the good news is that the most dangerous fade quickly, after 50 days. Senior 94 has had 58,000 half-lives and is therefore 100% gone. Senior 89 is at half its original quantity, but Senior 90 is still 99.99% there. As there are hundreds of different isotopes created, the initial high radiation fades quickly, but never fades out completely formation and decay. This is because some of the mass is lost as free neutrons, and once kinetic energy of the fission product has been removed, then the mass associated with this energy is lost to the system also, and thus appears to be missing from the cooled fission products. Since the nuclei that can readily undergo fission are particularly neutron-rich, the initial fission products are almost always more neutron-rich than stable nuclei of the same mass as the fission product. The initial fission products therefore may be unstable and typically undergo beta decay towards stable nuclei, converting a neutron to a proton with each beta emission. A few neutron-rich and short-lived initial fission products decay by ordinary beta decay followed by immediate emission of a neutron by the excited daughter product. This process is the source of so-called delayed neutrons, which play an important role in control of a nuclear reactor. The first beta decays are rapid and may release high-energy beta particles or gamma radiation. However, as the fission products approach stable nuclear conditions, the last one or two decays may have a long half-life and release less energy. There are a few exceptions with relatively long half-lives and high decay energy, such as strontium-90, cesium-137, tin-126, radioactivity over time. Fission products have half-lives of 90 years or less, except for seven long-lived fission products that have half-lives of 211,100 years and more. Therefore the total radioactivity of a mixture of pure fission products decreases rapidly for the first several hundred years before stabilizing that, a low level that changes little for hundreds of thousands of years. This behavior of pure fission products with actinides removed contrasts with the decay of fuel that still contains actinides. This fuel is produced in the so-called open nuclear fuel cycle. A number of these actinides have half-lives in the missing range of about 100 to 200,000 years, causing some difficulty with storage plans in this time range for open cycle non-reprocessed fuels. 
proponents of nuclear fuel cycles which aim to consume all their actinides by fission, such as the Integral Fast Reactor and Molten Salt Reactor, use this fact to claim that within 200 years, the fuel wastes are no more radioactive than the original uranium ore. Fission products emit beta radiation, while actinides primarily emit alpha radiation. Many of each also emit gamma radiation. Yield. Each fission of a parent atom produces a different set of fission products atoms. However, while an individual fission is not predictable, the fission products are statistically predictable. The amount of any particular isotope produced per fission is called its yield, typically expressed as percent per parent fission. Therefore, yields total to 200%, not 100%. While fission products include every element from zinc through the lanthanides, the majority of the fission products occur in two peaks. One peak occurs at about strontium to ruthenium while the other peak is at about tellurium to neodymium. The yield is somewhat dependent on the parent atom and also on the energy of the initiating neutron. In general the higher the energy of the state that undergoes nuclear fission, the more likely that the two fission products have similar mass. Hence as the neutron energy increases and or the energy of the fissile atom increases, the valley between the two peaks becomes more shallow. For instance, the curve of yield against mass for Pu-239 has a more shallow valley than that observed for U-235 when the neutrons of thermal neutrons. The curves for the fission of the later actinides tend to make even more shallow valleys. In extreme cases such as 259 fm, only one peak is seen. The adjacent figure shows a typical fission product distribution from the fission of uranium. Note that in the calculations used to make this graph, the activation of fission products was ignored and the fission was assumed to occur in a single moment rather than length of time. In this bar chart results are shown for different cooling times, time after fission. Because of the stability of nuclei with even numbers of protons and or neutrons, the curve of yield against element is not a smooth curve but tends to alternate. Note that the curve against mass number is smooth. Production. Small amounts of fission products are naturally formed as the result of either spontaneous fission of natural uranium, which occurs at a low rate, or as a result of neutrons from radioactive decay or reactions with cosmic ray particles. The microscopic tracks left by these fission products in some natural minerals are used in fission track dating to provide the cooling ages of natural rocks. The technique has an effective dating range of 0.1 ma to greater than 1.0 ga depending on the mineral used and the concentration of uranium in that mineral. About 1.5 billion years ago in a uranium ore body in Africa, a natural nuclear fission reactor operated for a few hundred thousand years and produced approximately 5 tons of fission products. These fission products were important in providing proof that the natural reactor had occurred. Fission products are produced in nuclear weapon explosions, with the amount depending on the type of weapon. The largest source of fission products is from nuclear reactors. In current nuclear power reactors, about 3% of the uranium in the fuel is converted into fission products as a byproduct of energy generation. Most of these fission products remain in the fuel unless there is fuel element failure or a nuclear accident, or the fuel is reprocessed. Power reactors in a nuclear power reactor, the main sources of radioactivity are fission products, actinides and activation products. Fission products are the largest source of radioactivity for the first several hundred years, while actinides are dominant roughly 103 to 105 years after fuel use. Fission occurs in the nuclear fuel, and the fission products are primarily retained within the fuel close to where they are produced. These fission products are important to the operation of the reactor because some fission products contribute delayed neutrons that are useful for reactor control while others are neutron poisons that tend to inhibit the nuclear reaction. The buildup of the fission product poisons is a key factor in determining the maximum duration a given fuel element can be kept within the reactor. 
The decay of short-lived fission products also provide a source of heat within the fuel that continues even after the reactor has been shut down and the fission reactions stopped. It is this decay heat that sets the requirements for cooling of a reactor after shutdown. If the fuel cladding around the fuel develops holes, then fission products can leak into the primary coolant. Depending on the fission product chemistry, it may settle within the reactor core or travel through the coolant system. Coolant systems include chemistry control systems that tend to remove such fission products. In a well-designed power reactor running under normal conditions, the radioactivity of the coolant is very low. It is known that the isotope responsible for the majority of the gamma exposure in fuel reprocessing plants is CS-137. Iodine-129 is one of the major radioactive elements released from reprocessing plants. In nuclear reactors both CS-137 and strontium-90 are found in locations remote from the fuel. This is because these isotopes are formed by the beta decay of noble gases which enable these isotopes to be deposited in locations remote from the fuel. Nuclear reactor poisons some fission products decay with the release of a neutron. Since there may be a short delay in time between the original fission event and the release of these neutrons, the latter are termed delayed neutrons. These delayed neutrons are important to nuclear reactor control. Some of the fission products, such as xenon-135 and samarium-149, have a high neutron absorption capacity. Since a nuclear reactor depends on a balance in the neutron production and absorption rates, those fission products that remove neutrons from the reaction will tend to shut the reactor down or poison the reactor. Nuclear fuels and reactors are designed to address this phenomenon through such features as burnable poisons and control rods. Build-up of xenon-135 during shutdown or low-power operation may poison the reactor enough to impede restart or to interfere with normal control of the reaction during restart or restoration of full power, possibly causing or contributing to an accident scenario. Nuclear weapons Nuclear weapons use fission as either the partial or the main energy source. Depending on the weapon design and where it is exploded, the relative importance of the fission product radioactivity will vary compared to the activation product radioactivity in the total fallout. Radioactivity The immediate fission products from nuclear weapon fission are essentially the same as those from any other fission source, depending slightly on the particular nuclide that is fissioning. However, the very short time scale for the reaction makes a difference in the particular mix of isotopes produced from an atomic bomb. For example, the 134Cs, 137Cs ratio provides an easy method of distinguishing between fallout from a bomb and the fission products from a power reactor. Almost no CS-134 is formed by nuclear fission. The 134Cs is formed by the neutron activation of the stable 133Cs which is formed by the decay of isotopes in the isobar. So in a momentary criticality by the time that the neutron flux becomes zero too little time will have passed for any 133Cs to be present. While in a power reactor plenty of time exists for the decay of the isotopes in the isobar to form 133Cs. The 133Cs thus formed can then be activated to form 134Cs only if the time between the start and the end of the criticality is long. According to Jerry Haller's textbook, the radioactivity in the fission product mixture in an atom bomb is mostly caused by short-lived isotopes such as I-131 and Bar-140. After about four months CE-141, ZR-95, NB-95, and Senior-89 represent the largest share of radioactive material. After two to three years, CE-144, PR-144, RU-106, RH-106, and Promethium-147 are the bulk of the radioactivity. 
After a few years, the radiation is dominated by strontium-90 and cesium-137, whereas in the period between 10,000 and a million years it is technetium-99 that dominates. Application Some fission products are used in medical and industrial radioactive sources. 99 TCO4- ion can react with steel surfaces to form a corrosion-resistant layer. In this way these metal oxoanions act as anodic corrosion inhibitors, it renders the steel surface passive. The formation of 99TCO2 on steel surfaces is one effect which will retard the release of 99TC from nuclear waste drums and nuclear equipment which has become lost prior to decontamination. In a similar way the release of radioiodine in a serious power reactor accident could be retarded by adsorption on metal surfaces within the nuclear plant. Much of the other work on the iodine chemistry which would occur during a bad accident has been done. Decay for fission of uranium-235, the predominant radioactive fission products include isotopes of iodine, cesium, strontium, xenon and barium. The threat becomes smaller with the passage of time. Locations where radiation fields once posed immediate mortal threats such as much of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant on day one of the accident and the ground zero sites of U.S. Atomic bombings in Japan are now relatively safe because the radioactivity has decayed to a low level. Many of the fission products decay through very short-lived isotopes to form stable isotopes, but a considerable number of the radioisotopes have half-lives longer than a day. The radioactivity in the fission product mixture is mostly caused by short-lived isotopes such as iodine-131 and 140 bar. After about four months 141 CE, 95 ZR, 95 NB and 89 Senior take the largest share, while after about two or three years the largest share is taken by 144 CE, 144 PR, 100 106 RU, 106 RH and 147 petameters. Later 90 senior and 137 Cs are the main radioisotopes, being succeeded by 99 TC. In the case of a release of radioactivity from a power reactor or used fuel, only some elements are released. As a result, the isotopic signature of the radioactivity is very different from an open-air nuclear detonation, where all the fission products are dispersed.